Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. We've got Professor Michael Sandel on. You might remember we covered the op-ed that he published in the New York Times about how classism Fantastic. is the last acceptable form of bias. We're going to dig into that and his new book. We also have great friend of the show, David Dayan, on. He's going to run through some of the plausible doomsday election <laughs> and transition scenarios that we all need to be aware of and have in the back of our minds. Um, but we wanted to start with a, a sort of drama that is unfolding. Another Democratic leader has come out and expressed skepticism about a potential coronavirus Yeah, vaccine. speaking of doomsday scenarios, this is yeah, certainly this is one. one of them. Um, and that is Cal Cunningham. He's running against Tom Tillis for the Senate seat in the state of North Carolina. They had a, a candidate debate yesterday on their local television station. Cal Cunningham was asked, would you take the vaccine for a corona vaccine if it came out before the end of the year? He expressed a lot of skepticism about it. Let's take a listen. So do I read you to say you would be hesitant to receive the vaccine if it were approved by the end of the year? I'm going to, yes, I would be hesitant, but I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I think that's incumbent on all of us right now in this environment with the way we've seen politics intervening in Washington. I mean, if we, we can almost look no further than Senator Tillis. Crystal, not not particularly good, given that, of course, that came on the heels for Kamala Harris, who said it earlier in the month. But this is a developing kind of conspiracy on the, I would say, amongst elite liberals, amongst this like Trump deranged elite liberals who are like, oh, they're going to screw with the vaccine. They're going to rush the vaccine. They're going to make I mean, this is deeply undermining faith in any sort of future vaccine. And we see that now throughout all, all of our American life. It is extremely dangerous. And yeah. I get it, right? President Trump has been a bad actor. He said all kinds of crap that wasn't true. There's evidence that he's put pressure on various government agencies. But if you were a leader, like, look around the country. We have to, I mean, we should all be praying that there is a vaccine, yes. that there are therapeutics that work, and when there is a vaccine, it's not good enough just to have it. People actually have to take it. Mm -hmm. And look, remember, this isn't just about protecting yourself and your family. There are some people who are immunocompromised who can't get a vaccine of this nature. And so we all depend on those who are healthy enough to receive that vaccine, taking it so that we can eventually get this pandemic under control. And so when you see people like uh, Cal Cunningham here, who, by the way, has been up in the polls. Yes, over he might time. win. He's very <laughs> likely to be the next U.S. senator from the state of North Carolina. When you see him saying basically like, uh, I'm not going to take it. This is deeply, deeply destructive. And again, I get it. But there's a way to talk about President Trump's irresponsible behavior without expressing skepticism about vaccines in general. We yeah. played for you here before. This was even more egregious. It's worth watching again. Kamala Harris, very similar approach. And you can tell in her answer, she's trying to play to like an anti-Trump MSNBC yes. base rather than really caring about public health and reassuring Americans that they should get a vaccine if it does, is developed and is certified. Let's take a listen to what Kamala said. I will say that I would not trust Donald Trump and it would have to be a credible source of information that talks about the um, the efficacy and the, and the reliability of whatever he's talking about. I will not take his word for it. He wants us to inject bleach. I, no, I will not take his word. And so what's, so what's it's, it's terrible. And what's really damaging here is we've got the polling. Trust in a potential vaccine is going down and down and down significantly. So here are the overall numbers. The trust in the vaccine has fallen 21 points since early April, you now have basically, you know, 50% uh, of the American public who says that they trust in a vaccine. And by the way, it's actually not partisan. If we can throw the partisan breakdown here, um, even though we have more elite Democrats expressing skepticism, uh, Republicans overall are more skeptical of a vaccine. But these, these numbers, you take them together, and it's really a troubling trend when you consider, like, if we're ever going to get out of this pandemic life that we're all living, 
we got to get people to take a vaccine and yeah. trust that it's going to work for them and be safe. This polling really scares the hell out of me. So 72% in early April, now down to 51% in a September to poll, 21% percentage drop in the last five months. You can actually see that is a drop amongst all ages, but particularly with women and across political parties. This isn't just a partisan thing, which is that you can actually see that Republicans and independents have some of the lowest amount of trust in a vaccine. And the amount of Democrats who say they might take one is in the high 60s. So elite liberals kind of stoking that could yeah. even make make it drop Absolutely. even further. If we see sub 50 or sub 40 numbers across all groups, what do we know about vaccines, which is that for the immunocompromised, having like herd immunity and having vaccines in that regard is actually the way in order to make sure that the elderly and people who might not be able to get a vaccine can feel comfortable going out and engaging in normal life. So if we kind of see this stoking of vaccine, um, but just like vaccine conspiracy theories, yeah. which is all effectively stems from Trump derangement. And like you said, look, let's be fair. Yeah, Trump has not really handled this stuff well. He says things which are not true all the time. And, you know, he'll like, something will happen which isn't a conspiracy. And then he'll be like, oh yeah, it was a conspiracy. You know, I mean, he stokes these things and he gives everybody no favors. But if you are running in order to replace him on the mantle of we'll take the coronavirus more seriously, yeah. then this is not really a tack that you should be taking. Yeah, well, that's a good point from the, from the politics of <laughs> right. it. But, I mean, purely from the... The public health perspective, and, and I think this is like a strain that you see running through the Democratic Party and Democratic Party politics now, is rather than waiting for, okay, here's the facts, all right? We've got a vaccine. Yes. Like, here's the facts. Is there any reason to mistrust this vaccine? Okay, let's deal with it as it comes in. There's just a level of conspiracy theorizing that is deeply just, it, it's sort of understandable, given some of the things right. that we've witnessed and some of the things the presidents have said and the way he puts pressure on government officials, all of that. But you have to deal with the specific facts as they come out. Otherwise, you create a deeply destructive situation, and it's incredibly irresponsible. I mean, this is just another sign, too, of kind of the failure and breakdown of American society. That's exactly That there is so little trust in any of our institutions that even something as basic as, like, our public health officials say that this is safe. It is approved right. by our government. Do you trust it or no? Look, there's always been a percentage of the American public that's like, eh, I'm not sure. I'm skeptical of everything. I'm skeptical like of everyone. Yeah. And sometimes those people are right, by the way. Mm -hmm. But when you have elite officials in one of the major parties going all in on that same type of fringe conspiracy theorizing, and you have a majority of the American public basically agreeing with them and following suit, I, this is an incredibly dangerous set of circumstances. It really is. And look, I mean, Biden, at the very least, handled it well whenever he had to clean up Kamala Harris's comments on the vaccine. Let's take a listen to what he said a couple of weeks ago. I want full transparency on the vaccine. One of the problems is the way he's playing with politics is he said so many things that aren't true. I'm worried if we do have a really good vaccine, people are going to be reluctant to take it. And so he's, he's undermining public confidence. But great God, we have it. If I could get a vaccine tomorrow, I'd do it. If it would cost me the election, I'd do it. We need a vaccine, and we need it now. Let's put it together. That's exactly what a public official should be saying. Yes. If I can get it tomorrow, I'd take it. Which is, and I mean, I remember, I think it was President Obama. There was, a, during swine flu, if anybody remembers, ever, there was like a fake story about a woman walk, being able to walk backwards or something and went viral. And like a lot of people were very upset about the vaccine. And Obama took the vaccine on camera. I mean, that's what you have to do. I really think so um, in these types of scenarios. And I think Trump too. I mean, all, at the same time, this is a boon to the Trump campaign, right? They can point to this and be like, oh, the party of science like doesn't believe in science whenever it comes down to Trump derangement. He called Kamala out at the time. Let's take a listen to what he said. Biden and his very liberal running mate, the most liberal person in Congress, by the way, is not a competent person, in my opinion, would destroy this country and would destroy this economy, should immediately apologize for the reckless anti-vaccine rhetoric. 
So there you go, anti-vaccine rhetoric. Yeah, I love to see on that. Right, yeah. I mean, I mean you're, you're handing him a, a but gift, it's true. really. It's true. I mean, it is blatantly irresponsible. And you can see now, what I think the most galling thing is, you know if it, things were reversed and if a Democrat was president yeah. and a Republican, like some Todd Akin type figure was like, I'm not taking that vaccine, they would lose it. The MSNBC, Maddow, all that stuff. But a Democratic Senate candidate like Cal Cunningham says it, not one word from the press. Uh, show me an MSNBC segment. Show me a CNN segment. Show me the QAnon for the left articles in The Atlantic right. and all these other concern trolls. It's not going to happen. That's the most dangerous part is that when it when elite liberals believe in a conspiracy theory, it just becomes true. Like Russiagate. Right. I mean, it yeah. really is like birtherism for the left. Yeah. And yet without any of the concern around birtherism. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, look, we covered here how stupid it was that face masks wearing became this like culture yeah. war partisan fight with absolutely irresponsible actors on the right including the president himself which continues to play on and new more yeah, indoor no events reason. with everybody together and barely any face masks to be found like that became a stupid partisan battle and what we see developing now is another potentially even more damaging stupid partisan conspiracy theory based battle over public health and what we all need to do together to live in this country here all together in order to get back to any semblance of a normal life. And so we will continue to track this here. I'm hoping and expecting that these candidates are going to keep getting questions yeah, like every, this. Everyone should get asked. Yeah. Every single one. And um, I mean, at least Biden had a good answer. But what we've seen overall and the trends among the American public, deeply concerning. Very bad. All right. We're going to have our Raiders for you. That's next.